You are live on Lunch Break Live, and we are so honored and excited to have Daphne Chang, who is a vegan celebrity chef to the stars. No. My gosh, you've cooked for Vera Wang and Moby and Stella McCartney, and now you're planning on taking your unique modern Chinese brand of vegan cooking mm -hmm. to the whole world, yes. starting in China. Wow, I mean, I am blown away. Uh, and maybe you could just start cooking and then we'll hear your fabulous story. Sure, yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, so we're making an eggnog creme brulee today. So coconut milk is gonna be the base. Mm. Let's start by opening that. Now, th this young woman, I don't even know how old you are, has done so much in her life that it, we could be here for hours. But I want to tell you that she has a very ambitious plan to open vegan Chinese restaurants in China, in mainland China, uh, which is uh, really an incredible, an incredible goal. And uh, you're well on your way, I understand. Yeah. Um, so I'm originally uh, American born, born in Chicago, but uh, I felt that uh, China is where the most impact can be made because it's 1.4 billion people and uh, they're actually consuming more and more meat every year. And uh, you know, meanwhile in the US and in Europe and other developed countries, meat consumption is already going down, but in China it's still rising quite rapidly. And so um, China already consumes 28% of the world's meat and that's only at half of the rate of what an American eats per year. So if you imagine if Chinese start to eat as much as Americans, then the math just doesn't add up, it doesn't compute. So. Well, it's, it's gonna be an ecological and environmental c calamity that we already have, but it's gonna exacerbate it. So you are going straight to the most difficult, difficult challenge, but the most important challenge. And as you said, you were born in Chicago and now you're living in China. Tell us about yeah. that. Yeah, I live in Shanghai. I moved there two years ago. Um, previously, I was in New York for seven years. And um, I, I actually really, really love Shanghai. Um, I think China gets a really bad rap in the media in the US. Um, but actually, it's a really, really wonderful, amazing city. People are really friendly. The food is amazing. And um, is there vegan food? So vegan, the concept does not really exist. Uh, there's some vegetarian restaurants and there's some some vegan restaurants, but they're not very widespread. And the ones that are, um, they're more like Buddhist. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Uh, people think of it as very like very old traditional cuisine and mm -hmm. so um, it's not very exciting and so that's kind of what I want to <laughs> create for China. Oh, well, the dogs are excited about it. Hey, come on kids, come on, watch it. They, 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 love, they love to bark, so uh, every so often they're going to bark. All right, so we're gonna, while they bark, you're whisking. Yeah. Now we're making this creme brulee, and uh, the creme brulee is so far, what you've done is just whisk the coconut. And I'm gonna add some water. For your sake. Just adding some water to that. Okay. And then um, we have a little bit of sugar. Oh, oh sugar. Wow. Okay, guys. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Okay, sugar. Okay. And then, and then what's add, next? This is a cornstarch. So this corn is going to wow. thicken it up so that wow. it's very nice and creamy texture. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And then the coconut milk will add like the really full richness and creaminess to it. Now, how did you learn to be such an incredible chef? <laughs> Um, I, I really started when I was 14, so that's when I became vegan. I've been vegetarian since 12, and uh, you know, decided that I, I still really love food, right? Just because you become vegan doesn't mean that you don't like eating anymore. So, yeah, um, <laughs> tell and me then, about it. <laughs> growing up in Chicago, you know, that's a heavy meat and potatoes, cheese kind of town, and so there wasn't really much for vegan back then. This is, yeah, 15 years ago now, and so um, I had to learn to cook for myself. And, uh, and how did you turn it into, uh, you serve 40,000 people at this point in various uh, dinner parties and other events. 
How did you learn to, to cook for that many people? Yeah, um, so that's through dinner parties alone and probably through my restaurants um, even more than that. But the, the, that, that number is uh, solely through like, I, I host like dinner parties where if you imagine one long table and everybody, you know, they come as strangers, but then it's an entire experience where you actually get to like meet and chat with people. And then it's a five to seven course or a 10 course tasting menu dinner. And um, I used to do those in New York for about uh, three years and then um, had also had restaurants in New York. Uh, one's called Mother of Pearl, one's Lady Bird. Um, and then, yeah, I've uh, just been building my career since uh, I started my first company when I was 19 um, wow. after uh, culinary school in New York. And yeah. so, um, yeah, since then, just keep working and keep growing. I just added a pinch of nutmeg. Pinch of nutmeg. And a little bit of cinnamon. So can you just give us a recap of what is in this? Because so far it's all, it looks like it's not cooked, except for the <laughs> coconut uh, oil yeah. that's cooked. Yeah. So what's in here? So right now we have coconut milk, uh, a little bit of water, cornstarch, cinnamon, and nutmeg. Uh, I added a little bit of vanilla extract. And then wow. I'm going to add a little bit of turmeric. You don't want... Too much. This is just yeah. for color. Um, you don't want it to impact the flavor. Yeah, turmeric is very intense, and I have overdone it on turmeric uh. <laughs> many times, yeah. many times, and made the food inedible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, it's a little bit better. Yeah, but a little bit. It's very good for you, mm -hmm. and a little yeah. bit goes a long way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So wow, and we are making eggnog creme brulee yes. from scratch. All right, where do we head over to the uh, yeah, stove now? The stove. And of course, we always say friends, not food. And um, well, our doggies are not in trouble today because it's the holidays. Yeah, and um, you know, uh, they can never get in trouble on Christmas Eve day for barking. Okay, so this is what you do. You just put it on the stove. Yeah, it's really simple. So wow. yeah, just mix all those ingredients together, make sure it's nice and smooth. Look how pretty that looks. And, yeah, and then we're just yeah. gonna cook it until it bubbles and boils and then thickens up. Wow. And then, um, yeah, super simple. Pour it into our containers and then uh, chill so it. I want to know, you have so many projects. Uh, uh, first of all, we're so excited to have you here. I know you're a very busy woman. Yeah. You came in from China. <laughs> yeah, love love being in L.A. Yeah. Always, any, we'll take any excuse to be in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so we want to squeeze all the information from you that we can during this time. While you're whisking away and this creme brulee is heating on the stove, can you tell us, um, you, okay, so you plan on opening a restaurant chain in China that's eventually going to go to the whole world. Yes. And um, you have other plans as well. Uh, tell us about some of the others. Sure. Um, yeah, so my company name is Superhuman, and so that's the, the name of the restaurant chain. And it will eventually also be uh, food and beverage products, so like everything from... You know, like a, a protein shake where it's yeah completely plant based to kind of show people that you can still get enough protein as that's like the biggest myth out there, right? So mm -hmm. um, you can get enough protein while eating plant based, and then also you know other other products like across lifestyle, so like apparel and um, wow, yeah. So like uh, we we just want to make it like a really cool brand. So like yeah, the name Superhuman, you know, it's just not necessarily what you would think a restaurant should be called, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's basically the idea is that it's ultimately going to be a, a whole lifestyle brand. So like, you know, we have like cool baseball caps with our logo and like everybody, everybody looks good in it. It's like uh, men and women. And that's the, kind of the idea is to create like a unisex brand also. Oh, I so, love that. Um, I'm very unisex. Yes. So like the problem is right now is a lot of these, um, vegan vegetarian brands like a lot of them are very feminine or you know maybe they're a little bit hippie which is yeah you know it's fine but um it's not gonna entice the mainstream and it's not gonna entice like men who have a you know this masculine identity that they really tie to meat quite often and um that's you know that's our culture and uh, so i'm trying to you know kind of tap into that and then create something that men would you know, be happy and, and proud to to be part of and not like ashamed or embarrassed and, uh, you know. Well, I always say real men don't have to kill to prove that they're manly. Absolutely. I mean, that's so primitive. Yes. That is fantastic that you're doing all this. And 
Um, wow, I am just blown away. And oh. I really I really hope that you have success in China. Thank you. Because yeah. you're right. I mean, 1.2 billion people. I mean, if, if unless China and China, you know, the Chinese government has said they want to reduce meat consumption by 50%. Yeah, and so they must be aware of the environmental consequences yes, of animal absolutely. agriculture. Yeah, they they are fully aware. It's just they don't really know what to do. So they they've made that statement. Oh, mm -hmm. we're going to reduce meat consumption, but uh, at this point, it's still just a statement, and um, no real steps or action has been made to to you know actually make that change. So um, for me, I'm, I'm approaching it uh, from a consumer behavior standpoint. So we're really trying to yeah, create this brand that entices people. So we're not really into like lecturing and um, you know, sh shaming people or making people feel guilty because I think that actually can backfire and cause people to then um, you know, kind of hate vegans yeah. and like, you know, you know, there's like mm. the, the term vegan Nazis and mm. uh, all that. Uh, mm. Actually, there's like a study that says mm. vegans are the most hated groups um, after Nazis, which um, which is quite unfortunate because we we're all you know definitely uh, goodwilled and uh, you know trying to do something good, but it, it doesn't always come out in the right way because um, you know because people are angry about you know what's happening in the you know, the food systems and with factory farming and all that, which is understandable. But then at the same time, we have to be understanding of, you know, the real world and, and the people who are in it and why they're consuming um, or why they're behaving the way they are. And then I, I'm fascinated by psychology. And so I approach um, everything from like, how do we actually change human behavior from, from a way that, you know, causes them to actually change instead of become defensive and um yeah so, so i agree with what, you yeah. in fact we were doing a whole series on um, how to communicate mm. and um we we were trying to use some of the techniques that uh, fbi hostage negotiators okay, yes. use mm -hmm. because in a way people are holding these animals hostage mm -hmm. and when you're dealing with let's say a bank robber or a terrorist who's holding somebody hostage you can't afford to get angry no, and scream at them because yeah. some bad thing could really happen yeah, yeah. you have to negotiate with them and what they say with that is you have to get them to agree mm -hmm. They, they have to come to the conclusion you want them to reach. So um, I think that's really, really wonderful that you're doing that. Now, let's get back to the the yeah. eggnog creme brulee 100% plant-based. Look yes. at that. It's beautiful nice and creamy and, and thickening up. Yeah. How do you know when it's done? So, yeah, just um, when it's fully bubbling and um, it's nice and thickened. Wow, so, look at that. Yeah, that looks gorgeous. Yeah. And then so you can beautiful. See, like, the yellow, just a hint of yellow. A hint of yellow from the turmeric, yeah. yes. Yeah. So now, be careful. Do you need any kind of a a, a mat or um, a um? I have a. Uh, hold on. Let's let's get get this over here. You're going to see us in action here, grabbing one of these. If you need this, or if you need mats, yeah. mitts. This is what I was talking about. Oh, my my brain. Mitts. Okay, here we go. So yeah, the creme brulee is going into the little creme brulee containers. Look at this. Wow. How fabulous. And it's super simple. So you yeah. saw how fast that was. Super fast and yeah. super simple. That's so, amazing that you did that so quickly. Yeah, but it'll still taste amazing and delicious. Yeah. And yeah. Um, um, that's what I geez. love. Jeez. That's, That's what just, I want to show people. Yeah, that, um, we'll just grab know, that little spot over there. And then we have, look at that beauty. <laughs> well done. And uh, now, do you dress this up with anything? Or are you just going to put like, um, let's see. Oh, the creme brulee, do they, does it have that sort of, um, does it develop a crust at all? Um, it, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so this, if you let it uh, cool off, it will develop like a little crust. Um, but if you don't like that, then you can cover it with a plastic film. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we, since we're a little bit tight on time on this show, mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to directly chill this. So this is, you know, typically you would chill it first and then bring it back out and then um, cover it with sugar. Oh, okay. Um, How long would you chill to, it for? Um, well, these are small containers, so... 
you know, you, uh, should only take like 20 to 30 minutes. 20 to yeah, 30 minutes. Yeah. Okay, so you would you would chill it for 20 to 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And then, so what, what happens after that? Let's say it's chilled. Yeah, so um, once it's chilled, then it'll be uh, solidified. Um, mm -hmm. And then, um, then we're going to sprinkle the sugar on top. Mm. So this is going to be the, the top for our creme brulee. Wow, look at that. That it's is just like really, a light dusting. You are very scientific. I, the way you operate, it's all very, very careful. Yeah. Um, now, let me ask you a little bit about the funding for your venture in China, because um, I, I do think it's probably one of the most important things that can be yeah. done on this planet right now, what you're trying to do. Oh, thank you. Because yeah. whereas... Animal agriculture is a leading cause of climate change and the leading cause of habitat destruction, wildlife extinction, human world hunger, human disease, etc. And China has so many people, so many more, yes. at least three times what the United States has, yes. that, that to stop the meat consumption and turn it around there is the most important. Do you have yes. angel investors or how are you... Yeah, it seems um, like a very, you know, mm -hmm. ambitious, and boy, <laughs> I like ambitious women who, yes. <laughs> who do whatever they've got to do to save the world, yes. but what, what, how are you making this happen? Yeah, so we, we had an, an angel round and we raised uh, about 700,000 US dollars, but uh, we're, we're actually starting to raise our next round so that we can then expand and um, open more locations and also expand to the US, um, open something in LA and uh, San Francisco as well. So. Now, does the Chinese, the, the average Chinese person's palate, is, is it different in the sense of what they're accustomed to eating where... A casual, mm -hmm. You're saying you want this to be a casual dining mm -hmm. chain in China, mm -hmm. which sounds fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but do you have to make it different than, let's say, what a casual dining chain in the United States uh, would be? Yes, absolutely. So Chinese are very picky <laughs> about what they eat. And um, so right, right now in, in China, a lot of the like healthy okay. kind of concepts are uh, very westernized and um, the flavors are like it's like salads and Chinese don't actually like to eat salad like it's um, cold so they don't really like to eat cold food so I've had to um, create a menu that is really um, tailored towards Chinese taste so um, I call it modern Chinese so it's um, you know Chinese ingredients Chinese flavors but then kind of modified and made a little bit more creative a little bit more fun international influence um, and then in that way, then it's still like new and exciting, but it's still something kind of a little bit more familiar to Chinese. And so um, you kind of have the best of, of both. Yeah. Now, if people want to get involved in this, I mean, you know, we, we have a whole wide spectrum of people who are watching. You never know. How would somebody get involved if they wanted to invest in Superhuman? Oh, yeah. Um, I guess you can find me on either Facebook or send me an email or my website. Uh, my email is hello at Daphne Chang, D A P H N E C A G N G. Wow. Um, yeah. So uh, you're you're very confident. That's what I love about you. You've picked the biggest challenge probably on the planet right now. <laughs> yeah. And you're just going to take it and just make it happen. Yeah. I mean, that's the only way to do it, right? You just got to you know make a plan and move forward. And um, you know, it has not been easy in China. Definitely a lot of obstacles and. Um, but it, it's absolutely super important and I'm totally convinced that like this is what I need to be doing. And so there's, you know, kind of no other option, like whatever obstacle comes, um, you just keep, keep moving forward, keep overcoming and then just uh, yeah, keep going. Well, I, if I had a, a magic wand, I'd put you right in front of the <laughs> Chinese leadership so you yeah. could explain to them why it would really be like saving the world to do this. Yes. Oh, by the way, uh, Nan wanted to know, is there an alternative to sugar? Uh, yeah, you can use um, like maple syrup or uh, agave. Um, the, the top will take a little bit longer to um, crystallize, but it'll still work. Um, so it'll just take, yeah, take longer just because sugar is dry already. Now, let me ask you a quick question. Is this something where I could do a taste test? Uh, yes, um, did you take the phone? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, I was wondering maybe we could do, oh, you're going to bake it now. Um, yes, yeah, so this is the broil function. On wow, the, so look at that. We're broiling it for a while. 
if you have a, a torch, um, then you can just directly torch the uh, the sugar until it burns. Well, thank God I don't have a torch, because <laughs> I'm sure I would have burned the house down a long time ago if I had had yeah. a torch. But um, but the, you can use your oven broil function, so that's just the top um, super high heat, and then so it's going to brown the sugar until it's nice and caramelized, and then, yeah, then we'll be done. Okay, let's check that out for a second. Now, I just want to see what that looks like there. Um, huh. Uh, oh, we can just open it up maybe and see for a second. There. Oh, yeah. it's hot. It's already Yeah, yeah it's already broiling. Yeah. Oh, look, look, look. Yeah, yeah, look at that. There's there's the broiling happening. So that. So let me ask you a question. It, this you do before you put it in the freezer. Um, Typically, you would chill it first, but uh, we're, oh, we're, we're skipping. Oh, I got it. Bit. So, typically, you chill it for yeah. a half an hour, let it yeah. thicken up even more, and then put it uh, to give it that extra yeah. oomph. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And um, again, welcome to our plant based kitchen. We're here with Daphne Shang, who is um, truly amazing. I am just so impressed by all the things you're doing. Yeah, um, mm. I've, you know, ever since 14, this has kind of been my, my mm. life purpose. And mm -hmm. uh, I, mean, I think I'm fortunate to, to have found that and to, um, to find something that I, I love doing. I love cooking and I love sharing good food. And mm. like nothing makes me happier than like seeing, you know, somebody who claims to be like a meat lover saying like, oh my God, you know, I, this... They they just had a, a dinner uh, that I cooked and and they're like wow I I think I could go vegan maybe yeah you know? and like you know it's not that bad and this is delicious and I'm satisfied and so that that's like what I what I work for yeah now in China have you done any taste test with your modern Chinese and and gotten any sense of how the people there the average consumer yeah. in China reacts yeah we've we've done a lot of um, testing a lot of um, uh, we, we've also hosted a lot of events and dinners and so um, like one of them that I hosted was for Stella McCartney in Beijing actually and she had she invited a lot of like the Chinese celebrities um, I'm not super familiar with them but um, so that that got a lot of positive response and um, so that that's what's exciting is that like I, I've I really only gotten positive response from from the Chinese and so people are really excited they they do, they do understand that this is important um, th some people are more from like a health point of view and um, but you know, no matter what what reason you you eat more plant based it's it's all the same you know, the same in the now end. what is the grand because you're talking about superhuman which mm -hmm. is your um, up and coming. Uh, basically fast food casual for, um, uh, let me know when you gotta get that. And I have mix right there. You may wanna grab them in that upper sure. drawer over there. Um, but uh, you also have something called the Grand. Yeah. Can you tell us about that? So um, the Grand is, <laughs> Yeah, uh, the Grand is um, a, a members club, and so we kind of have these two concepts. One is for the mainstream, you know, everybody. It's super accessible, affordable, convenient, and and then the other side is um, more for trying to reach like the influencers of the world, like the people who have um, the means and the ability, like you know, executives at you know big corporations or investors with you know billion dollar funds, and um, trying to reach these people who can really make. Um, changes and like on a massive scale so um, it's a, a members club for yeah entrepreneurs investors and um, uh, kind of trying to uh, yeah create a community of people who are trying to make a positive change in the world is it connected to veganism um, in a way so like the food would be but um, it's more about uh, a general like kind of saving the world <laughs> yeah. so and the veganism is, is a part of that yeah, yeah. well I just yeah. wish that some of the smartest people in the world would wake up to it yeah. I mean so that's yeah that's what we're trying to target right like these people who you know um, uh, I think someone just posted like something about like there's 10 companies in the world that drive like that that impact that make the most impact and um, so if those 10 companies, if we got those 10 CEOs to start to make, you know, also just a small change, then, you know, the world would look a lot different, right? So, yeah. yeah. Well, wow. If anybody can do it, you can, because you're very chic, <laughs> which is something I only can observe because I'm not. Um, <laughs> um, 
It seems like it's in your personality. Uh, people either have it or they don't. It's like being cool. Either you've got it or you don't. Um, and uh, wow, look at these. Look at these. Wow, these are... And the aroma, people, I wish you were here. We've got that creme brulee aroma. So how long do you keep it cooking for? Um, yeah, we're just going until it starts to brown. So like the one in the back is... Yeah, brown. the one in the back is starting to brown. Boil, boil, turn trouble. No, it's it's very, very... Oh, this is this is exciting how you're making. We are making eggnog creme brulee, 100% plant-based. And um, we're here with Daphne Chen, who has some extremely ambitious and fabulous ideas. She's going to change China. She's going to get the CEOs of the top corporations <laughs> in the world to go vegan. Hope I so. like it. <laughs> Think big. Think yes. big. It's yeah. very, very... Deborah Hill says they can't be that smart. They're not waking up. Well, you know, here's the thing. Until you, as soon as you realize the truth, it becomes obvious, right? But until you realize that truth, mm -hmm. it's not obvious yeah. at all. Yeah. And also there's an addictive component. I can tell you I'm 23 years sober, mm -hmm. and until I hit bottom, you could have talked to me until you were blue in the face. I wasn't going to give up that alcohol. Right. Because I felt like it was air to me, like mm -hmm. I needed it to breathe. Mm -hmm. So we have to find a shift I do use the, uh, you know, you talk about psychology, I use yeah. that alcohol analogy all the time. Because I had the fear that I'll never have fun again, I'll never go dancing, I'll never mm -hmm. sing, I'll never go skiing. And I ended up doing all of those things and having a better time, because guess yes. what? I remembered what I did. Yes. And uh, so, um, it, it, but I always had that fear that my life would be over. I think that's how some people feel about giving up meat. Yeah, they feel like yeah. their life would be over. Yeah, yeah. They can't give up that steak. So we have to help them hit bottom, mm -hmm. I think, to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. And it, unfortunately, it's not a logical thing. You know, by studying that hostage negotiation technique, the first thing they say mm -hmm. is people aren't logical. They're emotional no, beings. No, yeah. Absolutely. So you're mm -hmm. making it cool. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, showing people that um, that they're that they're not weird. Also, like it, it's a very cultural and like social thing. Food, right? So, uh, when we eat out, we don't want to be the weird one. You know, um, when we're dining with our friends or like with our families, we don't want to be that. Oh, yeah. That's the, that's the vegan with yeah. like, the weird requests. Like so, um, culturally, it has a lot of. Um, a lot of obstacles, but that's kind of what we want to but, change. But let me ask you a question, because China, you know, the China study, that mm -hmm. famous book that showed that a plant-based diet mm -hmm. will cause um, longevity, mm -hmm. greater length of life, lower disease, et cetera, et cetera, that basically proved that plant-based diet is the way to go. Mm -hmm. It was done in China yes. because China had been plant-based yes. for so long so it, it's the Western, um, and let me know if you need to stop. Oh, I'm coming around the bend to catch this. Be careful. Be this careful. This actually, the signs are. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Wow, look at that. Oh, it looks good. Okay. If you want to take it out, just tell me when you want to take it out, and we'll take it out. That one. Oh, my gosh. I can't wait to taste test this. Woo, creme brulee, baby. Here we go. Look at that. That's fabulous. Um, we're going to be doing a taste test of the creme brulee. And please be careful with the... Uh... Oh, you're putting a little more sugar on it? Mm. Deborah LaBelle is complimenting your skin. Everybody says how beautiful you are. Thank you. Okay, and here it is, boiling. I can't wait to taste test yeah, now. It's going to be hot. Um, yes, we'll let it cool off because I find discussing this stuff with you is absolutely <laughs> fascinating. Um, and um, so, okay, so what happened to China that it was so plant-based that you could do the China study there, mm -hmm. and now animal, animal consumption, meat consumption is going way up. Yeah, so, you know, historically, yeah, China was, had a very vegetable-heavy diet. And um, so what, what happened, you know, as they modernize and as they westernize, the, you know, all the fast food chains come in, McDonald's comes in, KFC. KFC is actually more popular than McDonald's. So um, then, 
people started to shift their diet and also because meat was a little bit more rare and it's more expensive um, for for people growing up um, you know when the China was more impoverished then meats has now become a status symbol oh God. yeah so it's it's a luxury and like uh, another aspect of Chinese culture that's not really um, not great is they they love to order way too much food mm -hmm. so you have this full table that nobody will ever ever finish and a lot of it is meat oh. and so it's it's totally wasteful and um just yeah platters of meat that is just for show kind of you know hospitality but also status symbol we have and, that in know, america this, this too show you see that like, yeah, and, and that's that's probably the most unfortunate um, aspect. And so hopefully if we are able to also change that kind of cultural um, tradition and, and, you know, maybe give them something else to show off. like, right. that, and, that, and that's kind of why we're, we want to approach it as like, yeah, creating something that's like, yeah, a cool brand and, and making it a status symbol so that it's like, yeah, I'm... I'm cool. I'm vegan. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Well. Yeah. It, it, what's the social media situation in China? So uh, Facebook and Instagram um, and Twitter they're all blocked, and uh, there's like a completely different system in China. So um, it's like Weibo is like the Twitter version. Mm -hmm. um, uh, WeChat is sort of an everything app. It's actually more of like an operating system. So yeah. Everybody uses it for, um, you, you can pay people for it, um, like any street vendor will use WeChat, so mm -hmm. mobile payment is like totally widespread in China and totally normal. I haven't even touched cash like in like a year since being there, um, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, there's a, yeah, just a, a totally different world. And so, um, you know, I've also started to do a lot of uh, social media um, short videos just to show people like and where do uh, they go recipes. on uh so primarily my weibo account so weibo um, yeah w-e-i-b-o w-e-i-b-o and that's yep. kind of like a combination of facebook um yeah a little bit um so it's like yeah you have your feed and you can do pictures you can do like there's no like word restriction like twitter but um it's like quicker content <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Now, are we set for a taste test? Uh, Be careful. Oh. Yeah. So. We are here live with Daphne yeah. Shang, and she is a social media chef <laughs> to the stars, and she's going to be showing us in one minute the final product. very very quickly so we're hoping that you will just take China by storm and change all of that yeah the thing is China moves very fast and so things things can change really quickly so once we get going I do feel like we should be able to have like a, a big impact that um, you know has a ripple effect and we, we really want to create like a movement and so that's really what you know superhuman is about and um, the idea for the name came from the Avengers so it's like the idea of you know everybody has their superpower um, you know you have your own unique gift but then when you come together and you come together as a team then everybody's that much stronger right and so we we want you know I can't do this alone absolutely not. and so um, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a the creme Sorry. brulee uh, so you know we need we need more people to to help and move this forward and so that's that's really what it's about is creating a movement yeah so um yeah uh, <laughs> um i'm gonna check on the creme brulee in the oven This one is oh, and I got, it got me coffee for a touch. Okay, guys, 
Well, listen, I think it's time for a taste test. Yes. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit more cinnamon on top. Okie doke. Look at that. I'm very excited to try it. All right. Well, if you want to come around here and hold this, oh, sure. and then I will go try it. Just hold it right like that. And uh, let's see. Here I am. <laughs> okay, people. Here it is. I get to try this fabulous creme brulee. I'm very, very excited about this. Mmm, it looks very warm, so I'm going to talk for a second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to do everything we can to support Daphne in her effort to wake the people of China up. Um, you know, we're trying to wake up America uh, and Europe. Oh, my God, this is delicious. Really? <laughs> oh, my God, this is delicious. This is an amazing creme brulee. Oh, my gosh. Mmm, wow, this is like so it. good. Amazing. I needed this. Mmm, yum, yum, yum. Perfect. For wow, so perfect. And I can see how it thickens up. Mmm. You know, this was a very simple recipe that you made. Mm -hmm. yeah, and um, I just love it. Awesome. It's absolutely delicious. Mmm. And it's yeah. coconut based. Mm -hmm. So, um, very, very simple. Yeah. Mmm. Safe for most allergies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mmm, yeah. look at this. It's absolutely delicious. Mmm, super duper. All right, listen, I'm going to give this back to you. I'm going to take this back to you. We'll just wrap it up. And I just want to say, everybody is so impressed. Um, so tell me, when do you think you're going to have your first restaurant in China? Um, so yeah, we we're, we'll be open within like a month. Um, what? So, yeah. You open in a month? Yeah, we we actually you know we already had a location, but now we have to move. But um, yeah, long story short, we'll we'll be open soon. Yeah. Wow, right. one month. What city? <laughs> Shanghai. Shanghai. Okay, that's amazing. Now, is there is there a difference um, between what? Um, is Shanghai like the New York or the yes. L.A.? Yes. Um, well, it's, you know, it's definitely its own city, so you yeah. can't directly compare, but it's yeah, very much like the New York of China, where that's kind of where it's the most progressive and it's fashionable and stylish and, um, yeah, more like cosmopolitan kind of city. What about um, Beijing? Beijing I don't really like. <laughs> um, <laughs> Beijing is like a big, giant, like, concrete jungle with uh, <laughs> a lot of traffic and... Um, a lot of people like there the populations are about the same but you don't really feel it in shanghai but you feel it in beijing there's just people everywhere okay but that's <laughs> the center of the government obviously yeah, yeah yeah so you might have to open one in beijing like yes, right right yeah. where all the uh find out where all the government big shots go for yes, lunch yeah. and open it right there <laughs> yeah. right of course yes well i really hope that you get to talk to some of the folks in china that run the country mm -hmm. and i think if anybody can do it you can do it <gasps> Hope so. You yeah. can do it. You can Working get in there it. and Working find out and, yes. and, and just use logic. I mean, logically, whichever country becomes the first country to fully embrace plant-based living will basically inherit the earth. Yes. Because in 10 years, we won't have any wild animals at all, except in zoos, if we continue on destroying the planet. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing is such important work. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, and any help I can get, <laughs> definitely welcome. All right, so, Daphne, yeah. thank you thank for you. joining thank us. So Woohoo! All right, talk soon.